Um, in true entrepreneur fashion, uh, I have a presentation that I may or may not follow. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna try to go through some of this stuff just by show of hands so I can kind of gauge my time and, um, and I'm gonna need extra help because I haven't, you can't really rehearse this when it's interactive. So the most difficult time, thing for me is keeping track of the time. So Anne, be really loud and help me out on how much time we have throughout this. Um, but how many of you have heard of Simon Sinek's Golden Circle of Why? Okay, perfect. So we can go really fast through part of my presentation, which I was hoping to do, and make it more interactive. As many of the partners know, we're trying to make the e for e experience much more interactive, and so I've got some things to do as part of the interactivity that we can get to quicker. Um, I was asked to present on how did Medici grow without diluting its offering, and I don't know if I have the right answer, but the story behind coming up with this presentation, I think, actually answers that. So about a month ago, in preparation um, at Medici Strategy Session, I solicited other members' help, and Tom Ruich was amazing, and came up to our whiteboard and kind of outlined, you should do it on what the core values are, and tell your why, and all of this stuff, so if you're related to the Simon Sinek. And that's really the core behind how we were able to grow, was following these core values. So as a fun exercise, um, and in true entrepreneur spirit, I make, this good, I didn't make enough copies for everybody, so when you don't have, because I was saving trees, right? Um, but I do have one per table. So in instead of changing the exercise to each individual telling me what their core values are or what their ranking of the core values are, perfect, thank you, of what their, how they would rank these core values, it is even cooler when we collaborate together and form the core values as a table or as a business. So Medici has these core values, they're listed in alphabetical order, but one of the exercises that we've done is we've pulled our membership to rank these in their particular order, and instead of thinking of as a stagnant sign, think of them as slots that can move up and down based on that particular group at that particular time, or that particular room in a, in a studio, or something that's going through. So one of the classic ones is cleanliness. It's on the board. Um, it, I don't want to influence your ratings as we do a group exercise, but that is one that is definitely a polar um, core value. You're either clean or you're not, and you either really want cleanliness or you kind of, or you put it as number 10. Um, so I don't want to influence anymore, but let's take about two, three minutes, talk as a group, and what I'm looking for is how you all would rank these 10 core values in order of importance. One being the most important, 10 being the least important. Any context, you mean in terms of our meeting here or what? To you and what you want to do. It is totally free thinking.
All right, we're going to do about 30 more seconds. Are we good? All right, so as a, as a wrap up, um, good lively discussion. It's always a good uh, base to work off of. So if I find that the Medici ship is sailing in, in the wrong direction, or we have a particular member that behaves in an unruly or different way, I look to these core values and I use this as my guidance to get us back in the direction that we want to go. Um, and, and you can add to the list. We've had exercises here at E4E that have tons more than, more than that of core values. Um, but these have become the 10 that we've, kind, we've lived off of. And I often refer to Medici as a case study of case studies. We're over 170 members. And part of that case study of case studies, we're very much like E4E, but just 365 days a year with 50,000 square feet of studio spaces and co-working environment and so forth. And E3 does a great job of defining their value ladder. And if I were going to def put this in a value ladder perspective, you could start at a lower level membership and work your way up. But how we've been able to grow without dilution is to always think of an additional part to that ladder, that the ladder never stops. So what do you do after you fill your slots of premium? You add a platinum membership, or you start adding different levels of service and value exchange equaling to what that different membership level is. So when you're creating your value ladder, don't put a cap, as my, recommend, my marketing tip would be not to put a cap on that. So as I alluded to the beginning, um, what is your why, or start with why? This is the golden circle from Simon Sinek, and if I'm not gonna bore you, he does a lot better job in 18 minutes. It's one of the most viewed TEDx presentations, top 10 viewed TEDx uh, presentations. So you've got your why, why the business coexists. Um, I'm just gonna go through this really fast because I wanna get to the really why. So I was uh, leading a business leadership group of, uh, we did it core, uh, trimesters, and it was recent grads looking for their entry level position, and we coupled marketing projects, which was fun for this group, with half a day in a call center, which was not fun for the group. Um, and we would meet daily and go over the marketing projects and it was a lot of fun for me to, to be able to lead this group. Of, it would range from 10 to 16 people at a time. In the process, after the first day, um, I would say to them, how was your first day the next, in the follow-up morning meeting? And you would get the classic, how was school, son? Fine, right? <laughs> right? It was good, right? And so, what I realized in asking them that question, they were starting to give me their why in a one word, non-descriptive answer. But when I pushed them to say, all right, you all went home, you had a significant other, you might live with your mom and dad. When they asked you how your day was, did you just say fine? Or did you get into a blah, 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 and Josh was a jerk, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And the truth is, they were much more open and willing to share further when at, and put in that context. So that opened up lots of conversation to not what is your why, because we're all here willing to share what our why is, right? And I would use this next exercise to elicit, the dif to, to show the difference between your why and your really why. Why did somebody come here today? Let's start with that. Who wants to tell me why they came here today? Yes. Touched my soul, not even just my heart, it touched my soul. That's why I'm here. 
Okay, and you're really why? <laughs> Let's get another example of a why. <laughs> so I'll use mine, or we can, anybody else want to do a why? Why did you guys come to, to E for E today? To hear you speak. All right, that's a bunch of BS. That is not, that's perfect. So, because ironically, if I was going to do my why, why did I come here today? Well, I came here to do this presentation. That's not my really why, right? If you want to pull back my really why, as Les says, he came here to hear me speak. What's your really why, Les? And so when I came here, I didn't come here to speak or to hear myself present. Um, I came here for lots of different reasons and lots of really wise. Um, so what I want to do now, let's see if I've got this right. Okay. Um, who came here to meet cool people? Okay. So this is my form of net. As Bill Burnett has said. Um, Join three networking groups, right? Not just one, you know, give yourself a point of comparison so you've got two and maybe a third is kind of that three bid approach to business as well. And that's what some advice that I've done. So one of my whys for Medici and e e is I can't stand networking. I do not like what is going on right here from the networking perspective. It's, I'm introverted in, when it comes to networking, believe it or not. Um, so one of my whys for building Medici was, and, and one of our members pointed out to me, you don't dislike networking. You just don't like going to other things where there's lots of people and it's social. You like to bring them to you. And so that's what I did. We built Medici to accomplish one of my whys is I don't like networking, but I love people. I love having parties. You know, I love having people come and, we're, and meet and have coffee on my turf. I mean, this is a little, it, it's very similar to our turf, but it's not my turf. Right? So that was one of my really whys of Medici was to bring people to me so that I could network with them as well. Another really why on Medici was um, part of that surface networking, that first date, how do you get past that? And I felt like we really get to know people when we're working alongside of one another, not just the meet and greet. So if you're in an interactive strategy session or a small group experience just by sharing your core values, you really understand, you can start to get to know somebody because you're working alongside them, not just this superficial dating of networking. Um, so if, who came here to meet people? A few, all right. So I did this a few months ago and I wanna know who's in the audience, but as a, as a great rerun of what we did and I wanna know who's out there, if you take out your phones and you go to LinkedIn, if you don't have the app, that's okay. You just can't participate as much as people who do. But if you have your LinkedIn app and you click on your networking button icon, which is this on the app, it's the lower left second one, it's the people, people icon. If you click on that, I should have prefaced, make sure your Bluetooth is on. And click find nearby. And you get this radiating pulse of finding people who are nearby you that are on LinkedIn. In the lower left, second to the left, so the people icon, that opens up the network page. And then in the top center, there's a find nearby, turn it on, turn it off button. So I, I did this before in this group, and we had, I don't think we had this large of a group, Bill. It was, I mean, it was, this is large, this is awesome. So I can expand my connections a lot, which is not my really why, but to get to know the audience is a really why. So Bernie Frazier, I can easily connect with Bernie and Heidi Martin and Jennifer Thomas. And a lot of these are already my connections. Christine Teague, you don't have to accept my invite, but I'm, in, I'm gonna invite you. Corey, Corey Edwards. If you're already connected, it'll show you like a message. It'll, you can send them a message. So you can message your audience. And if you're not connected, it shows the person with a plus. So Walter Trepler. If you're not connected, it's the person with a plus. Correct, and you just click on that person with a plus. Dave Austin. Ted, how are we not connected? What the heck? 
So I just did about 15, is that, t I can't read it. Five minutes, okay. So um, I told you you have to yell, so all right. Um, so I just, I just increased my connections by about 10 really quickly for those of you who had the app and did what I said and did the find nearby. And in a previous, I did that as a marketing tip, but it's a way to know who's in the audience. If I do it as a speaker, it's a way to, not everybody does it, so if you're like at a chamber meeting and you do it, maybe two or three people might show up, even though there's hundreds of people. But if you got the person emceeing the event saying, all right, we're gonna find out who's here, you could instantaneously connect with the audience. So hopefully that's a good takeaway for you, for those people who came to meet people. Um, a quick, as in closing, or questions. Um, yes, Dale. Yeah, I've got a question. We're talking about the... Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you were talking earlier about the value ladder, and one of the things I was wondering is whether or not the value ladder differs depending upon uh, each segment of the market that you're dealing with. So uh, does one customer group have a different value ladder than another? So the short answer is absolutely yes. I mean, I've learned from being a lead generation and sales uh, somewhat self-proclaimed guru that um, never to say no in the sales process, but to try to customize the offer. So if I don't have the right membership level for the person that's looking for it, I would create a new membership for that person and a price point. The price is just the, um, it, it's just the representation of that value exchange. So, um, and I'm interested in following up. There's a gentleman that does a podcast on, that has the memberships um, model and stuff. So anyway, so the answer is yes. I mean, you clearly, continue to build the value ladder and to make sure that there's a fair value exchange. And for those of you who know what the definition of fair is, I'll give you my father's definition because it seems to work. Uh, fair is what two people agree upon. And so if you use that definition to, to, dis, to define a fair value exchange, I can be delivering a membership at this level and if they don't think that it's fair, we didn't agree. And, and so it's what two people agree upon defines fairness. Anything else? We can catch up on some time. All right. Well, thank you very much. And how'd we do? All right.